JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, being a man not in police custody. The Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, is refuting reports that dancehall entertainer Moses Miniman Davis has been arrested for breaching the coronavirus law. He's not in police custody, and no, he wasn't, said Senior Superintendent of Police, SSP Stephanie Lindsay, who heads the JCF's Corporate Communications Unit. Several posts of the contrary have been circulating on social media. SSP Lindsay explained that the police last night ended a gathering Davis was hosting in honor of his late mother because the number of people there exceeded the limit allowed under the Disaster Risk Mitigation Act. He was instructed to close it off. He did comply, and the fact that he complied then, there would be no need to arrest him, Lindsay said. Following the elections, Prime Minister Andrew Holness announced that public gatherings were reduced to 15 persons, down from 20. There's also an island-wide curfew running from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. daily. The government had committed to stricter enforcement of the measures because of the surge in coronavirus cases, which is now at the community transmission level. That means that contact tracing is almost impossible. Over the last 24 hours, Jamaica recorded five additional COVID-19-related deaths, pushing the national tally to 60, 14 of which came in the last three days. And with 187 confirmed cases over the same period, the overall count now stands at 4,758, of which 3,291 are active. Firearm and ammo seized in Seaview Gardens and Portmore. The police are reporting the seizure of a gun and several rounds of ammunition in separate incidents in St. Andrew and St. Catherine this week. In the first incident, the police said they seized one 9mm submachine gun and several rounds of ammunition during an operation along Riverton Avenue in Seaview Gardens, St. Andrew yesterday. The police said officers entered the premises and upon seeing the police, one of the occupants threw an object through a window and ran. A search was carried out and the firearm and ammunition found. The incident happened about 7.50 a.m. The police said no arrest was made. In the second incident in St. Catherine, officers seized several rounds of ammunition on Rosemary Lane in Portmore on Wednesday, September 16. The police said that a team acting on intelligence conducted a search at a premises around 9 p.m and a bag containing eight 9mm rounds and 10 12-gauge rounds was found on the roof of the building. No one was arrested in connection with that seizure either, the police said. Senior citizen dies in Portland fire. Early Friday morning, a 74-year-old farmer and builder, Clarence Garwood, perished in a fire at his home. He is the second person to have died in a fire in Portland for this year. Firefighters found Garwood's charred body face down in the bedroom located at the front of his house. The bedroom, as well as a board section of the house, was completely destroyed. The blaze was put up by the Port Antonio Fire Service. The cause of the fire is not yet determined. However, the estimated damage is $3 million. Garwood's neighbor, Genevieve Smith, described him as a jovial man. I was in my bed and I hear fire, fire. And as I'm a business owner and have a shop for myself, me think it was my shop. When me get up and open the window, me see fire over Mr. Garwood's residence. So me start for call out, she said. Me called the Hope Bay police station and I couldn't get through. And I googled the fire brigade and I called them and tell them that my neighbor's house is on fire. And I don't know if he's in there because I don't see him. Within less than 20 minutes, the fire truck was there, she added. She said Garwood was a jovial person who was always running jokes. Nothing in this world troubled that man. Anything at all I said to him, him just laugh, she said. It really sad for no seven man in when me come here no me can't call him. She said Garwood did building work and farmed banana, coconut and yam. He also reared pigs. Cops investigating colleagues shooting injury. The constabulary force says it has launched a top level investigation into the shooting of a sergeant of police who was responding to an alleged robbery in Manly Meadows, Kingston 2 early this morning. The police said that on arrival in the community, the sergeant and a constable saw two armed men standing by a road. The cops said that as they approached, the assailants 
open gunfire forcing them to do likewise in self-defense. The incident occurred about 5.46 a.m. The sergeant was shot in his shoulder. The constable was not injured. He was taken to the hospital where he was treated and discharged. The alleged shooters escaped, the police said. The JCF is appealing to anyone who may have information about the two men involved in the attack on the lawmen to contact the Elliston Road Criminal Investigations Branch at 876-928-4200, Crime Stop at 311 or the nearest police station. Threat levels against police officers raised to high by police high command. The threat level for violence against officers was raised to high by the Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF High Command following three separate but coordinated attempts on the lives of police officers and their families on Friday night. Three men have been taken into custody in connection with the investigations by the police. According to the police's communication unit, the constabulary is unable to disclose further details at this time because of the sensitivity of the investigation. Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson assured the nation that the JCF remains undeterred in its efforts to bring down criminal gangs. We will relentlessly pursue not only the individuals who carried out these attacks, but also those persons who helped facilitate, organize, and coordinated them in any way. These latest attacks have only served to strengthen our resolve to dismantle these criminal gangs. We will continue to pursue the support systems, connected parties, and sources of funding for these criminal enterprises, said Commissioner Anderson. Members of the JCF were advised by the Commissioner of Police to be alert and vigilant. 23-year-old dies in motorcycle crash. A 23-year-old man is now dead as a result of injuries he received in a motorcycle collision on Newmarket Grove Main Road in St. Elizabeth on Thursday, September 17. He is Andre Carnegie, a laborer of Fraser District, Newmarket. The police said that Carnegie was riding a motorcycle when he lost control and collided into an unfinished building. The incident happened about 9 p.m., they said. Carnegie was pronounced dead at hospital. Policeman charged by iProbe for breaches of the Firearms Act sentenced. A policeman who was charged with breaches of the firearms and the larceny acts by the Inspectorate and Professional Standards Oversight Bureau, I probe on Thursday, September 23, was sentenced following his appearance in the Home Circuit Court on Friday, September 18. Constable Johnny McBean pleaded guilty to illegal possession of firearm, illegal possession of ammunition, and a simple larceny on Wednesday, June 24. He was later sentenced to six months imprisonment with hard labor on the illegal possession of firearm and two years imprisonment on the simple larceny of the firearm. The sentences are to run concurrently. According to the police, McBean was charged following a ruling from the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. A file was submitted to the office following an investigation that was launched when a firearm and a magazine containing 14 nanomem rounds of ammunition were discovered missing from a Jamaica Constabulary Force facility in St. Catherine, the police's communication unit reported. The police said investigations were then conducted by iProbe and following an operation on January 18, the weapon, along with the magazine and rounds, were recovered at McBean's home. U.S. gifts Jamaica multi-million dollar field hospital to help COVID-19 fight. The United States government has donated a 70-bed mobile field hospital to Jamaica to assist the country's coronavirus fight. The U.S. $753,000 facility was transported to Jamaica today by the U.S. Air Force and will be set up in St. Andrew. It was purchased as part of the U.S. Southern Command's Southcom ongoing assistance to the Caribbean, Central America, and South America. On September 10, Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton announced that a field hospital will be established in the corporate area within the next two weeks. The hospital is equipped to operate autonomously and includes a high-efficiency particulate air and ultraviolet light air scrubber system two diesel generators, and eight air conditioning units, a statement from Southcom said. Medical teams using the hospital can configure it to isolate patients and conduct surgical operations if needed. 
The statement said the hospital will be set up September 21 to 23 before being officially delivered to the Jamaican government on September 24 at a ceremony at the National Chess Hospital in St. Andrew. A team of civilian trainers will instruct Jamaican medical and support teams chosen to run the mobile hospital on its assembly, set up, use, disassembly, transportation and storage. Southcom says it has also funded the donation of handheld thermometers and patient beds at a cost of approximately 86,000 US dollars. It says the total cost of support to Jamaica to fight COVID and other infectious diseases has amounted to US $2 million. The local health authorities have been under pressure for a field hospital because of the current surge in coronavirus cases and resilient burdening of the system. In April, Permanent Secretary in the Health and Wellness Ministry, Dunstan Bryan, told a parliamentary committee that $182 million was to be spent to set up a field hospital at the National Arena. The intention was for the facility to be brought into service if Jamaica was going through a spike and function as an isolation location for persons who test positive for COVID-19 as well as those who have mild symptoms of the disease. The government later said it was reconsidering the location with little updates since. But the spike since August has led to renewed calls with increasing complaints from health workers about the limited resources at leading facilities in the COVID-19 response. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.